Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and another watercolour sketchbook painting. In today's video I'm going to be painting a really easy pair of flamingos, as I felt like painting something simple, bright and a bit looser in style, so I hope you enjoy the video. I also wanted to make my composition a bit more interesting today, so rather than just restrict my painting to one side of the paper, I thought I'd spread it out over both. This Hanamuli watercolour sketchbook does say that you can paint on both sides of the paper, so I guess we'll find out. Details of the sketchbook and all the other art supplies I'm going to use will be found in the description box if you want to go and check them out, as well as the reference photo from Pixabay. For the sketch today, I'm just drawing out freehand using an HB pencil, and I've started out by drawing the flamingo on the left hand side with some of its body going over onto the other page. I really like watching other artists sketchbook tours and seeing how they use their sketchbooks and drawing over the centre line, albeit only a little bit, makes it look like a real sketchbook and gives you extra space to express yourself. With the flamingo on the right, I love how there's almost a heart shaped space formed between them which is partly what attracted me to this reference picture in the first place. I also love their bright coloured feathers and how they look so elegant and I wanted to try and keep my painting fresh and simple to match. I think that's why I've been really enjoying painting this sketchbook. It doesn't have to be a perfectly finished painting. Your sketchbook can also be a place where you can be whimsical and explore different styles or techniques depending on what you're feeling at the moment. So I'm not going to be spending ages on this sketchbook piece today. I want it to look loose and expressive and instead of using my regular paintbrushes, I'm going to be using an aqua brush to keep it all quite fluid. I'm also going to use this waterproof black Copic multiliner before I start, just to put in the really tiny black pupils and the thin black lines on the beaks. So far as paint colour goes, I was aiming for a bright orangey red, so swatched out some cadmium red light and some cadmium orange deep. It took me a few attempts to get the right colour mix, but when I had, it was just a case of mixing up enough of this colour to paint both the flamingos. This helps to save time remixing this colour again later on whilst I'm trying to paint. I also got out some sepia and indigo to mix it into the wet paint for the shadow areas. To paint these beautiful birds I worked wet on wet to start with, just doing a small area at a time. This paper dries so quickly that I find it hard to pre-wet larger areas as previous areas are dry before I finished. I dropped in some really concentrated pigment as I wanted these birds to be super vibrant. Watercolours can dry lighter, meaning you may need to add more layers, but even though you can build up the value like this, you do sometimes lose the vibrant luminosity of the watercolours, so I'm trying to go in darker to account for some lightening as it dries. I used the fine brush point of the water brush not just to drop colour in, but also to try and lift some colour out in areas. This just added interest and variety and gave the neck of the flamingos a little bit more texture. I started the second flamingo in the same way as I had the first, so wetting the paper first on the head area and then dropping in some really bright pigment. I also, whilst the paper was still wet, added in some sepia tones just to act as a bit of shading underneath the head. I wasn't going for a completely flat wash on any part of the bird, so I really enjoyed letting those colours just bleed out and do their own thing. This method seemed to work really well when I was dropping in the orange paint, but not so well when I tried to add some of that sepia to the right hand side of the flamingo's neck. It didn't bleed out as well as I'd wanted it to because I think the paper had already tried to dry. What I could have done is waited for that first layer to dry and then go in and add another layer on top, but to be honest I haven't had that good a result with trying to glaze with this paper. Maybe that's because this paper isn't cotton, and when you add layers on top of previously dried layers, it does tend to kind of push the paint about and almost reactivate it. What I did enjoy though was painting in the feathers on the flamingo's body. Rather than pre-wet the entire area like I did for the head and neck, I used the water brush to paint in feathery brush strokes using just clean water. Then when I applied paint to the body in the same way, I got a really nice mixture of both soft and hard edges, which I think is a really easy way to get a nice feathery effect. And once I got those base layers down, I could then build up using the same feathery strokes in the direction of the feather growth. Now 
Moving on to the second flamingo's body now, and I used the same method as before, making sure the first flamingo's neck was dry first, as I didn't want my paint to bleed into that. I laid down some clean water first before dropping in some really bright paint, and as much as I was still trying to paint more loosely, I still used the reference photo as a guide to get in the darker shadow areas and general direction of the feathers over the flamingo's body. I continued to work a section at a time and alternated between adding clean water and then dropping in paint. I really enjoyed the effect where you can get some harsh edges and some soft ones and how you can feather out those ones you don't want and add in details and darker ones on top where you do want them. When it came to painting the feathers on the other side of the page, I have to say I didn't have any problems at all and didn't even notice any difference. So when Hannah Muller says you can paint on both sides, you can paint on both sides. With the body of the second flamingo pretty much done, I went back to add some more contrast to the first. The paint was dry by now, so I just used the damp water brush to soften out any harsh edges I didn't want. I also built up some more sepia into those darker shadow areas. I also added in another layer of my orangey red mix to try and blend out that area that hadn't been too smooth before. I then worked on the area under the face in the same way. With all the feathers done it was then time to move on to the face and for this I used a little bit more detail with my water brush just putting in some of those more finer features. I thought it made a nice contrast to the looser feathers on the neck and the body of the flamingos. I really like how with the water brush you've got so much flexibility so you can do larger areas and washes and you can also do these much more fine detailed areas as well. For the black area of the beak though, I did decide to go in with a regular paintbrush. Just because I didn't want much water with this bit, I wanted it to be really concentrated. And rather than just adding black straight out of the pan, I added in some sepia and some indigo as well. I really like adding blue tones to my black just because it helps make them be a bit more interesting and less flat. For the flamingo's eyes, I used cadmium yellow light, yellow ochre and a little bit of burnt sienna. I transferred over to a really fine double zero paintbrush for this just because I wanted those really tiny details. I used sepia just to outline the eye itself and add a small amount of shading between the orange feathers and the top of the beak. Before I could call it done though, I just did want to go in and darken up the area under the flamingo's head, just to add a bit more contrast. This time though, I added a little bit of indigo to my orange red mix. I did still use the water brush to apply it to the flamingo's neck, but when it came to softening the edges, I opted to change up to my regular paintbrush again. I thought this would give me better water control and it did seem to do the trick. So as much as I did love using the water brush to get all the different feather effects and so on, I do think that the disadvantage to using it is that obviously you've got a constant supply or flow of water. So it's not so good if you want to apply layers and keep the layers underneath nice and crisp on this paper anyways, but that's something that I've learnt for next time. On the whole though, I had a lot of fun with this sketchbook painting and this is how it turned out. I really like spreading my painting across the centre fold and I'm really happy with the looser feel and look to the flamingo's feathers. I like how you can leave some of the white of the paper too, as well as have a variation of soft and hard edges to add texture and a bit of flamingo fun. I hope you like this video, give it a big thumbs up if you did, comment below and subscribe if you're not already. Thank you so much for watching, take care and have a great weekend. Bye!